Hi, I'm Willie Howe. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is the first time you've been to the channel, welcome. And I hope you'll think about subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Here on the channel, we do tips, tricks, and configuration tutorials for Ubiquity, um, Grandstream, you name a vendor. Uh, we are probably going to touch it. There'll even be some things like uh, Cisco, Extreme Networks, things like that coming this year. So thank you for being here. I appreciate everybody who's here. And tonight we are going to address the age-old question. <laughs> it's probably not age-old, but we're going to address the topic of static IP addresses with Unify. And we'll even talk a little bit about my edge router because it's going to come into play. I'm going to show you a simple spreadsheet. I'll upload it so you can download it. And what we're going to do real quick is we are going to hop over here. Now, here is one of my Unify sites. This one happens to be Willie Howe. And if we hop over here to devices, we can see that I've got a lab switch and I've got two um, HD access points that are currently going. I've got a switch and an access point that are currently offline. I've got the power pull to those. I'm changing some things around. But what I want to talk about, I'm going to bring this spreadsheet up too, is I believe that all of your infrastructure devices should have static IP addresses, that you should not let DHCP take care of infrastructure devices. I think that that is uh, an incorrect way to design a network and, de and to deploy a network. So in the production networks that I deploy it. Sometimes I have the customer say, well, do we really need to put static IPs on the APs? APs are, you really should. Um, when the customer wants to argue, I will say, you know, this is my opinion. I believe this is why we should do it. We should always be able to get to those devices. If your DHCP fails, you're not going to be able to get to your devices because they're going to lose their IP addresses. And sometimes uh, I, 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 you know, convince them to do that. Sometimes, you know, they don't want to do it. So um, if I'm designing from scratch, I will give all of my infrastructure devices static IP addresses. Now, the spreadsheet that you're seeing here, I'm going to put this up for download because no matter how rudimentary your documentation is, you should always have documentation. So I'm going to provide this just as a download so you can have this as kind of a template if you don't have anything else. So over here is where our IPs are going to go and then what device it is. I would not keep credentials in this. I would keep creden credentials in uh, encrypted uh, format, you know, if you have to keep them like this. However you're managing your passwords, that's an entirely different um, subject for an entirely different video. But this, we're going to build this out a little bit. Now, over here, you can see for my network, for my test network, my ranges are 66.2 uh, through 66.5 will be switches and access points. 66.6 through 66.10 will be NASs and phone systems. 66.11 through 66.20 would be NVRs and cameras. And the list goes on and on. A lot of people, I've even seen um, static IP addresses on IP phones. Now, Sometimes I don't I don't typically go that far because we auto provision those phones and in an um, you know and you could I mean because if you lost your router and your phone lost your IP I mean you you totally could do that but typically that's something that we design specifically for in the network so phones don't usually have static IPs I have seen it. And if you want that, that's cool. Uh, I'm definitely not going to argue when somebody wants stat static IPs on devices that that could be critical to. Um, infrastructure and phones at in some deployments, I, I guess I could see now that I'm saying it out loud, could be um, critical infrastructure. So we're going to go back over here to Unify. And this is how on a, a Unify switch, we are going to set a static IP. This guy right now, this is the lab switch. Right now, this switch is 66.106. So we're going to click on the switch and we're going to come over here to config. And we're going to go down to network. And right now it's it's set at a static IP. It's just not within my range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to dot two. I'm going to hit Q changes and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to apply all of those changes. So at some point you can see I was messing around with static IPs and my my switch here had a static IP. Now it was not in that range. Now I really do like having 
a a system where I know, you know, switches and APs are in this range, servers are in this range, and then it gets easy for me and people that I work with when we're talking about IPs because we don't always talk about fully qualified, you know, domain names. Uh, you know, server1.abc.lan or .org, whatever. You know, we don't talk like that. You know, when we're talking about a server, we'll say, probably call it by the short name, like, oh, that server's name is like Hope, right? So the Hope server. And then somebody will say, well, what's the IP for the Hope server? You know, and I'm going to say, you know, 192.168.66. You know, in this case, it, it that doesn't fall into any of these ranges. But if I had uh, multiple servers like that, I would have a range strictly for and you definitely if you run an active directory don't don't be a ding dong put put a static ip address on your servers people so all right so we can see that it is now updated lab switch to have a 192.168.66.2 which is perfect now uh you can see that there was when I change that IP, that lab HD is actually plugged into it. So it must have done something. Um, I've got a solid blue, but my phone is also on. I don't have to roll the video back and see if I can see something happening over my shoulder. Uh, but this lab, the lab HD also happens to be plugged into it. And it says that it's adopting, which is, I'm not sure what's up with that. But anyway, so the upstairs AP. So we're going to click on the AP. We're going to go to config. We're going to go down to network. Right now, this one is using DHCP, so we're going to switch this over to a static IP. We're going to make that upstairs um, dot three. And of course, we're using a class C subnet, 254 usable IP addresses. If you don't know how to subnet, you don't know what subnetting is, you've never done subnetting, reach out to me. We can talk about subnetting. I've even thought about doing a, uh, a primer on that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to queue the changes there. Now my lab HD, now that it is done having its fit, I'm going to click on config. I'm going to go down to network. We're going to do static IP. It's going to be dot four. And I'm going to queue those changes now. I have two devices. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It's going to reach out to those devices, and we will see in just a minute the IP address of those devices. We will see those update. So this is a very basic way to track your IPs. If you're doing you know, consulting work for someone or even your own home network, uh, you have me come in or you have some other consultant come in and you have these static IPs that is going to make our job so much easier, makes discovery so much easier. Not everybody uses Unify and I don't always like digging through Unify. Sometimes Unify for me, it is sluggish to respond and, and things like that. You make changes and you've got to wait. So sometimes I will do my work outside of Unify and I deploy a lot of networks that are not Unify. So we're talking HP based networks, uh, Cisco networks, Brocade slash Ruckus, or even Edge Router, Edge Switch, Grandstream, Synology. So you know, I, I have to know how to document in, you know, a, a myriad of ways outside of Unify. So I, like I said, I'll provide this, you can take this and do what you will with it. But I thought it was just a nice little, nice little template. And I'll leave the examples in here. Let's go back over. And now you can see that our lab HD has 66.4 doesn't look like our upstairs AP it says it's still got hmm, interesting. Maybe I didn't click, maybe I didn't click apply all. So that one will go ahead and provision. But I do think that it is very important that your devices, your infrastructure devices, so router switches, servers, uh, did I say access points, NAS devices, cameras, any of these things, you know, that that are integral pieces either to your business or to the network should definitely have static IP addresses. Workstations, maybe, depends what's going on. Is it a, 
you know, a print server and are all the machines windows. If they're not, then maybe you have to have a static IP. Printers should usually have a static IP as well. So my printer back there definitely has a static IP address. But that is what I really wanted to talk about. You should be doing static IPs. If you have any questions about static IPs, when you should, shouldn't use them, you can reach out to me. You can put the questions down there in the comments and I will try to answer those. But that's it for this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, you can go to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form. If, um, you know, if we can't help you after we look at the request, we'll get you to a vendor who can. That's our promise to you. And you know, we try to respond quickly and you know we want to help you out with all those needs if you want to support the channel on patreon and become a patron thank you to all those folks that link is down below our discord link is down below and if you want to buy any of the gear that you see us here use here on the channel that amazon link is down below doesn't change your price but it does kick a couple bucks to the channel and that is always appreciated once again i want to thank you for coming to the channel i want to thank you for being here being a subscriber hitting that notify uh, bell and as always i'll see you in the next video